Mr. Hewley, this is a great pleasure for me that you accepted my invitation for the Zoom conference and you are a special guest in the Chistush podcast in my program. Uh, and uh, I'm really honored that uh, uh, we have a chance to talk to someone uh, who should ask those questions uh, that has uh, real relevance to the global sports. In your position, it's not just that you're a doctor of science, but you're obviously uh, a person who is really have the overlook of the sporting world since you're a president of the global association of the international uh, sports federation you're also the the president of sports accord you're also the first man the president of the association of ioc recognized international sports federation and you're also the first man of the uh, international powerboarding federation and a member of the international olympic committee sports and active society commission so basically you have all the views of the uh, international situation of the global sporting world at the moment. So thank you for accepting my invitation for this interview. And uh, let me start with a question that uh, now we can see some, some sort of a release of these very rigorous restrictions uh, regarding to the uh, coronavirus pandemic, European-wise and worldwide. And I could, uh, I'm really uh, interested uh, in your opinion uh, and about your impression sitting in your office in Rome. Uh, what do you think uh, about the sporting world now that is coming out of this two or three months freeze? Um, how is it getting along in the sporting world? Uh, is it coming to alive again? Well, first of all, uh, allow me to thank you for the kind invitation, which I have accepted with uh, great pleasure. And um, on behalf of the guys um, uh, family, uh, I would like to start by sharing uh, my concern from the athletes and their families who have been affected by this uh, global um, uh, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, it has been a very turbulent time so far this year in uh, the overall sporting uh, world. And um, yes, of course, we all uh, had to adjust our plans. Uh, just to take uh, a step back, uh, our priority uh, has always uh, been the health and the welfare of our international sport federation and uh, uh, athletes. We are uh, well aware, aware that um, uh, as uh, uh, lockdowns are lifted, as you said uh, uh, before, worldwide, there will be transitional phases when certain uh, restrictions will be eased. And certainly we are monitoring those closely. At the moment, it is a very, very fluid uh, and changeable situation, but uh, hopefully there will be soon more certainty about how we can move on also uh, in uh, everyday life. And not just when we organize or attend uh, large uh, sport events. So this is an extremely challenging time for everyone, but sport has shown remarkable resilience. Athletes are still an inspirational example for all of us. In many cases, we've seen international federation demonstrate great imagination, great inspiration uh, by creating innovative projects during the lockdown in full coordination, of course, with their athletes. For example, World Archery virtual competition was a great demonstration of how sport can go online. But uh, meanwhile, other international sport federations have created virtual competition where fans can also get uh, involved, uh, such as, for example, the International Chess Federation. Uh, they had a great initiative where uh, they've organized over 2,000 online tournaments for players, no matter their age, nationality, or level. It's beautiful to see all of this creativity come to the forefront during uh, these uh, uh, very difficult times. And uh, I'm sure sport has continued to inspire uh, uh, many. Now, I would like to focus on one uh, uh, specific point. This uh, pandemic has uh, accelerated the work of our members on e-sport. And I think this is something we continue to work on together. And we encourage them to keep finding new ways of drawing people into sport. We've seen that uh, with uh, competitive and professional sport, 
It's not the question of whether they survive. Clearly, they have survived. We have already seen this with uh, national leagues, such as the Bundesliga, which returned just a few weeks ago. In other countries, leagues uh, in a variety of sport are also making their own uh, plans for the safe return to sport. So when you mention the damage, so in the longer term, I would say that it's too early to say, but I believe that sport is resilient and will continue to do all that I can, all that it can to keep people in good shape and in good spirit. We have seen uh, how sport is embedded in uh, uh, communities across the globe and how it brings people together. So I'm sure sport will play a vital role in steering the recovery of the world. And in the meantime, guys is working alongside with the IOC and all our members to help mitigate any damage. And we will do everything we can in our capacity of uh, umbrella organization of this 125 uh, uh, member federation and uh, organization. Well, I, I suppose from what you have been telling to me that um, obviously uh, the online communities have been strengthening up because of uh, the uh, the communication uh, obviously on the online space has been has been growing. But in the meantime, it is also important in the sporting world uh, what is going to happen to the fans. Obviously, we have uh, now phases uh, in the competitions and in the leagues and the championships when they open up, but most of them, uh, obviously, uh, without spectators. So it's a good uh, and a very important question. What is going to happen in the long run with the spectators, the fans? Uh, what do you think? Uh, how can and the sporting world survive uh, from that point of view that for a long time they probably uh, they won't have the revenue of coming from the ticket selling also from the merchandising and it's also in general I'm wondering do you think that the sporting world will lose fans forever because of this pandemic? Ultimately this uh, transition will be decided by local political leaders and public health authorities not sport we must be aware that sport events do not exist in isolation and mindful of the fact that the current situation is not uniform uh, across all countries. We have also to consider that international travel arrangements are currently in a state, allow me to call it fluidity. So we are monitoring this uh, situation very closely. But having said uh, this in general terms, there will be need to be various level of social distancing and uh, risk uh, mitigation measure put in place at all events in the foreseeable future. So we have to be clear with that. And we have already seen uh, uh, this in our everyday lives, as I'm sure for you, just uh, as it is for me uh, here in Rome, our world has not yet returned what we knew before the pandemic. But at the same time, we've already seen that the different size of events are being planned in different places. In the Czech Republic, for example, the National Athletics Federation earlier announced a series of micro meetings beginning in June for uh, its athletes. This meeting will be limited uh, to just 50 people with a further 100 events for younger athletes arranged across the country. These phases will uh, last as long as needed to ensure, again, the health and well-being of everyone involved in a uh, uh, sport uh, uh, event. So when you mention, you know, sport events, uh, matches without spectators, uh, um, I think uh, it's very, very difficult to make a single generalization regarding the impact on international federation and so on. At this stage, dealing with uh, hypotheticals uh, would be premature. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I understand, obviously, just it would, it would be good to, to foresee something of these transitions, yeah. uh, but obviously at the moment it's not really predictable. I can give you my opinion if you wish. I mean, I, I certainly, I mean, there are experts worldwide uh, that are looking, uh, you know, uh, at many ways that the COVID-19 could be 
uh, treated and managed. And uh, I'm sure a lot of positive uh, uh, things could happen and develop in the coming months. But as an organization, we will always give priority and adapt to protect the welfare and interest of our stakeholder and athlete to ensure that uh, they enjoy the best possible experience at uh, our events. But uh, look at what's already happened, you know, for example, uh, the sport community is already coming up with uh, uh, innovative solution when you talk about fans, to engage fans in other ways. Take the Bundesliga team Borussia uh, Mönchengladbach, who uh, fill the stand of their stadium with 13,000 printed images of their uh, fans for a small contribution. So the club was able to raise some revenues while helping fans to feel a part of the game despite being at home. So this solution helped to engage fans, the fans that you mentioned, in uh, whole new ways. So many of them will probably have long-term benefit for uh, sport organization. And even when we will return to some sort of uh, normality, we may see a lasting positive impact of the way uh, we experience sport. So I would like just to conclude by saying that uh, Honestly, I do not believe that sport will lose fans because of this. In fact, if anything, this will help sport gain more fans and inspire people around the, the world, especially as our society focuses on things that matter. I feel that we have all realized, specifically in this situation, how special sport is to us. Absolutely. And I'm very happy that you're so positive about the capability of sport of surviving a situation like that and also maybe unifying people even more than fans uh, after the situation. As you have mentioned already, uh, the, uh, the revenue, uh, I think this is a very important question that we must talk about, especially because as we talk about basically uh, uh, the revenue of the sporting world it stands on uh, three main pillars. Uh, one of them has been already mentioned is about the ticket sales. Uh, one of them already, uh, which we have to talk about, obviously the sponsorship. And the third one is about the TV rights and, and, uh, and the rights basically coming from the broadcasting company. Companies. Uh, I'm not saying it myself, but there are experts uh, worldwide uh, who, who predict a very big loss in that kind of income, that kind of revenue. Uh, let me just uh, quote uh, this, uh, this uh, internationally uh, well-known uh, company uh, who are experts, uh, and they uh, basically predict uh, that probably two circles that I'm talking about, they predict about so 37 percent of loss in the in the incoming revenue uh, coming from the from the tv rights from the broadcasting world which is which is a huge amount of money uh, probably uh, about 16 billion euro is going to be missing from the system uh, this year compared to the previous year. And this is just one pillar that we are talking about. So I think that one of the biggest questions that uh, uh, Sporting World has to face to is probably the, the lack of revenue uh, from this situation because of this freeze of the Sporting World. Uh, and what do you think uh, the solution might be uh, and how, where it would be coming from, from the IOC or from new sponsors or what could be the, the solution for this very, very difficult period? A lot of what um, has been mentioned uh, refers to professional leagues and uh, therefore it is not uh, in uh, guys' uh, sport of, uh, let's say, scope of work. Okay? Uh, that being said, GAISP is doing uh, everything uh, possible to help uh, provide financial security for uh, our members. Uh, in the case of the International Federation, um, it has been fantastic to see the effort of the International Olympic Committee, uh, the Swiss Confederation and uh, other authorities in helping to support them during these uh, very challenging uh, uh, times. Uh, let me say that uh, uh, I've seen uh, several examples of uh, 
some of the incredible initiatives and projects that the International Federation have created during this time to keep uh, funds entertained and uh, engaged. And also, it's very encouraging to see that our community is uh, uh, united behind the common goal of utilizing the, the power of sport as a symbol of uh, positivity, uh, hope, uh, and uh, uh, unity. So the international sport community together is reacting uh, in a very uh, uh, fast and very effective way to compensate, let's say, this uh, 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 lack of uh, uh, revenues uh, deriving from the, the crisis you, you mentioned. And I'm very, very happy that uh, we are working together to ensure that um, sport will come out stronger than uh, before. Well, obviously, IOC will also have a, a very important role in that. And if we talk about uh, this situation, I know that already uh, $150 million, I would say, uh, financial aid package uh, has been uh, signed by the IOC uh, probably about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I don't know, I'm not able to tell whether this amount of money uh, could be like just a, a short financial aid or can it last for long? Uh, and obviously because of the postponement of the, of the Tokyo Olympic Games, which was supposed to be taking place this summer and now we, we have a, it rescheduled for next summer, obviously that kind of revenue that would be coming from IOC after the Olympic Games for the international federations uh, yeah. that will also be postponed. So my question is that this, this uh, extended period of time without this revenue coming in, how will help or how uh, the international federations will be able to do and survive this, this extended period without that kind of money? So about uh, the postponement of Tokyo, certainly the people with the most direct connection with uh, the International Federation uh, connected, let's say, to the, the Tokyo Games uh, are the IOC and the ASOIF, uh, which is the association of the Summer Olympic uh, uh, sport. And, um, um, and uh, they are dealing with uh, these uh, issues. Um, and um, but certainly we as uh, guys, as the United Voice of Sport, uh, are um, happy to be part of the process and certainly help to protect the interest of our international, uh, 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 let's say, federation. Um, when you mentioned this uh, aid package, uh, which has been created by the by the IOC to help the Olympic movement. Uh, certainly, they would be in a much better position, let's say, uh, to answer this question. But of course, we are uh, part of this uh, uh, discussion and uh, we are seeking to help our members in any way that, uh, that we can. Allow me to say that many sport federations, many of our IFs, uh, had to reshape their calendars and the absence of planning security uh, due to the uncertainty of the point in time when, uh, let's say, unrestricted uh, uh, or unconditioned trans-border movement uh, will be uh, authorized again, is one of the biggest headaches uh, to deal with. Um, in the case of most, if not all sport federation, the prolonged absence of activities certainly had a very strong impact on their financial uh, balance. But uh, they've immediately reacted uh, and adopted the uh, corrective measure to minimize the damage. And uh, I can't emphasize enough the importance of certain governmental support. For example, the Swiss uh, federal government and the cantonal uh, authorities to allow uh, the sport movement to continue playing its uh, crucial role in society. Uh, and I mean, uh, uh, health-wise, you know, uh, from the cultural viewpoint, social cohesion viewpoint, the educational role of sport, and why not the entertainment side, which is also uh, nowadays very, very important. So over the last uh, weeks uh, and, uh, and months, our IFs have uh, strived to ensure the safety of their staff who have remained committed mostly in smart work. 
to continuing to service uh, the needs of their stakeholder uh, during the suspension uh, of the international events worldwide. And um, uh, during this time, I've been uh, really warmed by the gestures of solidarity and support that uh, many IFs uh, have received from inside, but allow me to say also from the outside the sport uh, uh, community. Let me just ask a uh, last question about the finances. Also, there are some other difficulties that uh, we have to face too. Uh, Michael Payne, the former marketing director of IOC, when we had a chance to talk to him a couple of weeks ago, he said that uh, he predicts that after the pandemic, a new era will come to the international sports, especially in Europe. He thinks that uh, um, wages, salaries, really sometimes overpaid has to be uh, rethought. Maybe uh, the international sporting world, clubs, professionals, has to think about uh, the implementation of, uh, of salary caps, uh, just to have sort of a, uh, a, a different kind of, uh, a different kind of uh, a sharing of the revenues in the professional sport. Uh, he thinks there's a new era will be, will be coming. Uh, and I'm really interested in your opinion, whether you agree with that or you have some sort of a different point of view. That. Well, I think uh, the uh, international uh, sport landscape uh, will have to be uh, retold, reconsidered, and uh, we need to think uh, uh, seriously how to reform the reforms mm -hmm. um, in the sense that um, uh, many things will change. We've seen that many of our IFs, uh, they efficiently work. Um, a distance. So maybe they don't need to travel, you know, all the stuff. They don't need to travel every, every day to go to the office. Uh, uh, they can efficiently uh, work uh, and communicate uh, in uh, remote um, uh, working. Um, um, this requires a new way, a new relationship uh, between uh, uh, um, the workers and the managers because uh, an element of trust uh, of mutual confidence have to be in place in order to uh, certainly uh, adapt to this new way of uh, working. Uh, this will have uh, certainly also a very positive uh, uh, impact on the environment. Uh, when we talk about sustainability, uh, sustainable mobility means that we have to move uh, certainly when we have to, uh, but not necessarily it has to be a nice to have, you know. Uh, so um, we have all realized that uh, many of our international uh, uh, trips uh, and travels, let's say, can be optimized, for example. Right, right. right. And uh, often to have. Um, you know, a couple of hours uh, board meeting, uh, uh, we have to, to travel uh, all around the globe. And uh, with my federation, I've seen that uh, it is uh, very much uh, uh, efficient uh, to do it, um, let's say, uh, at, um, at the distance in digital. Uh, but this requires also uh, a new way to prepare the meetings, a new way to uh, be more focused, so to raise awareness right. that uh, 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 more focus uh, is uh, um, uh, required. But also we've seen, uh, as far as the athletes are concerned, for example, that uh, uh, remote training is something that in certain sport discipline is working uh, uh, quite, uh, quite well. Um, uh, we have seen uh, already uh, at national levels that uh, sport event uh, can be organized, uh, let's say in a new way, of course, you know, social distance, uh, uh, safety uh, measures. Uh, and I'm confident that the use of technology can help a lot to optimize the overall sport landscape, whether you are an athlete, whether you are a sport organizer, whether you are an international sport federation.
Well, it's definitely true that uh, the new digital era will, will uh, uh, you know, uh, create some new solutions and smart solutions, as you said, that can uh, help uh, uh, later on uh, and, uh, and do things uh, in, in a remote but, but smart uh, way. There is another uh, difficulty that uh, Sporting World has to face, uh, besides the, the finances and the lack of finances, obviously, is... Uh, calendar for next year that is going to be very crowded <laughs> obviously a lot of events not just the olympic games has been postponed some of them you know are not even known when it's going to be organized uh, what point in time uh, some of them already has uh, the place in the next year's calendar but what i'm uh, wondering and also this is uh, this must be a very difficult organizational work and it I think takes a lot of time and, and smart talkings uh, how to reorganize the schedule for next year or for even this fall and also how to reorganize the whole whole year calendar and what I'm wondering is whether uh, there are going to be events that basically are going to be falling out of this uh, international uh, calendar because of the uh, the crowdness of, of the next year's calendar or can you find the place of each important event especially because of the organizers uh, and the fans uh, point of view which would be very important well this is uh, a key topic so um, sport calendar uh, there is an ongoing uh, process and um, uh, open discussion among uh, all the key stakeholders to ensure that the global sport calendar remains as harmonious as uh, possible. And uh, this has been uh, uh, working very well as uh, International Federation continue to reschedule events in light of the current situation. Uh, from uh, big events to small events, uh, everyone uh, has been considered of each other's needs when deciding on uh, new dates for events and uh, respectful uh, uh, of the athletes, uh, of course, we are working to serve. To give you some example, the International Swimming Federation, FINA, the International Volleyball Federation, the FIVB, and the World Athletics, they have all moved prestigious World Championship events to 2022 in view of the uh, updated, uh, let's say, sport calendar we were uh, talking before. But in the meantime, we uh, took all the appropriate steps to ensure that guys, uh, uh, staff, for example, you know, uh, uh, who is uh, actually serving from uh, uh, remote, um, we are liaising with uh, all our IFs, with national uh, governments, uh, and, um, and to keep uh, moving forward, certainly, to ensure that uh, there will be an effective transition from when the situation, uh, uh, let's say, uh, improve. Uh, and um, um, needless to say that uh, uh, we have to adhere to the recommendation of the World Health Organization and to observe uh, when we plan for uh, you know, the new calendar, uh, governmental instructions, uh, but certainly we will uh, uh, spare no effort to respect all measures that are uh, being put in place by the authorities to avoid uh, uh, the uh, resurge of the uh, epidemic, which none of us really is uh, uh, wishing to have. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, and I think, a very important area also that relates to the sporting world. This is basically an area which is probably one of the biggest victims of the effects of the uh, worldwide pandemic. This is tourism and tourism related to sport, which I think has been a very strong area in many countries like in Hungary as well. Uh, lately, uh, in the last couple of years, Budapest was sort of a melting point of all international events. You know, we uh, organized major events like the FINA World Championships, uh, the Judo World Championship, Wrestling World Championships, not even talking about uh, the huge success, uh, the World Urban Games from uh, last year. So uh, my question is, uh, what 
do you predict what do you foresee about this kind of uh, uh, touristic relations uh, that uh, <clears throat> has a connection to sport <clears throat> sorry about that so basically do you think that this is going to be a difficult area because of the of the effects of the pandemic to have fans uh, uh engaging again with sport and traveling with their favorite teams or on the contrary there is going to be a huge competition maybe between countries and cities in order to organize international events in order to uh, increase uh, their uh, touristic uh, background well thanks for this uh, very good question about uh, tourism and sport uh, I believe that uh, tourism uh, will uh, come back strongly in the future and sport will play a very important role in helping to promote uh, tourism as well. Uh, already Spain has confirmed that it will uh, uh, welcome foreign tourists from uh, 1st July onwards, ending its uh, two weeks quarantine policy. Uh, I believe this shows that countries are ready to welcome people in their countries if it is uh, safe to do so. I know there is a strong, strong appetite worldwide for international competition to resume and for uh, countries or cities wanting to host uh, events. Uh, as uh, always, this uh, should be uh, uh, done if the health and well-being of uh, all participants uh, can be ensured. So uh, I'm a believer in looking at the positives in uh, this situation and I feel that uh, the positive impact uh, this situation has had on our environment uh, should continue to be considered. So hopefully organizations will continue to think carefully about how to reduce their global environmental footprint to protect our planet and its environment and we see many many of our members moving to online meetings uh, and i think many of these meetings will continue to take place online from uh, 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 for some time to to come so tourism uh, i think will uh, uh, certainly benefit from uh, all uh, the positive things that the, the, the added value that sport can, uh, can uh, bring. I'm very positive about that. Well, it's very important that you're so optimistic in, uh, in all these uh, uh, views of, of uh, the, the difficulties of the sporting world. But allow me to be a little more specific about uh, my beloved uh, capital, uh, Budapest, especially because Budapest has been, I think, uh, not just a fantastic melting point of the international sporting events, but a, a fantastic rendezvous place, let's, see, let's say that. And uh, also in the same time, uh, Budapest had and has the ambition to become uh, sort of a center of international <clears throat> sport world and sporting events uh, as uh, you could see from uh, last year's event. So what do you think about uh, how difficult or easy will be to get back to the same stage uh, for a city like this and uh, can we get back to the same, same uh, stage at all? Is there a chance for that? Based on my own personal experience, Budapest is uh, an exceptionally capable sport event host. I like Budapest, I like Hungary. <laughs> and uh, I have uh, absolutely no doubt that uh, in the future, more incredible events, both uh, large and small, will be hosted in this beautiful, lovely city of Budapest. Uh, last September, Budapest uh, hosted the inaugural World Urban Games with uh, several competition sport, uh, showcase sport, uh, demonstration sport. And uh, we have been able to put together uh, the world of sport, the world of music, the world of art. And um, the World Urban Games Park was transformed, uh, I will never forget that, into a celebration of uh, active uh, urban culture. Uh, during this three days event, we had more than 50,000 people filling the park to watch uh, some of the best world uh, uh, urban athletes. And um, 
young people, but also adults, uh, uh, talk advantage uh, of our practice areas, providing opportunity for the general public to try new activities. This was a, a wonderful uh, occasion. So we had more than 800 children from local school having the opportunity to try out the new sporting activities under the guidance of these top level athletes. And I'm sure that uh, this left them with a new found inspiration for sport uh, after this first hand interaction with their role models. So uh, sport was at the, was, uh, at the center of the games, but uh, the link uh, to street art uh, and live DJs gave the event an authentic urban vibe that uh, bound the event together and uh, showed us that sport is much more than a competition. It is a lifestyle. And uh, I conclude by saying that we've been delighted to have such uh, a very positive feedback from uh, our international uh, sport federation, the media, and the athletes themselves. So I take the opportunity to thank the Budapest Local Organizing Committee, who did an outstanding job from start to finish in hosting what I define an unforgettable game. And we are now taking the time to debrief, to collect all feedback so that we can implement uh, these key findings when it comes to looking ahead to the next edition of the World uh, Urban Games. One last uh, uh, point. This uh, was uh, a very progressive multi-sport games uh, event, which was proud to promote gender equality. There was an equal number of athletes from each gender and equal price money across all sport. And this is something that we look to continue at future edition. So thanks Budapest, thanks Hungary. <laughs> Thank you so much. And it's very uh, interesting. Some people say that basically the World Urban Games is a new face of the Olympic Games, a modern face, a modern look of the of the modern era Olympic Games. I don't know if you share that kind of opinion, but uh, if it was such a success, then obviously there's a huge, huge uh, a big question about uh, uh, continuing this event. And I know there was a sort of a uh, anticipation of having Budapest again to be the host for next year. I don't know if there is any kind of uh, uh, further decision uh, uh, in that regard. Well, in light uh, of the current situation, discussion regarding next year's World Urban Games are currently on hold. As soon as the situation allows, we will continue this discussion and see how things uh, progress. Uh, of course, we are having conversation with uh, Budapest and um, certainly uh, if we will have the opportunity to go back, uh, uh, me personally, but I'm sure also the overall uh, uh, sport landscape will be very, very happy to go back to Budapest. That would be fantastic. And we would be more than happy to welcome you again in, in this city. So, Mr. President, thank you for your time. And I'm very glad that uh, we could talk about uh, difficult, difficult topics. And I'm even more glad that uh, all these difficult topics uh, uh, was approached by you from a very optimistic point of view, which I think is very important because this can uh, give uh, sort of an op optimistic outlook for the, for the sporting for, uh, world and the international federations as well, and also the national federations who basically uh, get their sources of information from the international federations. So I think this is fantastic. And hopefully in the next time soon, when we'll have a chance again to talk, uh, the situation will be even more promising. Let's cross fingers. Thank you so much for uh, hosting me. Thank you so much. Thank you. And all the best for you. Take care. Bye.